Hi there, this is Olivia with an update on my Sailor Moon-ish sewing projects. Um, I started making a pleated skirt and um, I haven't, well it looks finished but I haven't 100% uh, finished this. There's still a few adjustments that I need to, to make and uh, to be honest I'm being extremely slow with this one and um, really freestyling it, just figuring shit out as I go, which you can say it's a valid design development process. Uh, but of course, the slowness would be an issue if, um, if I were making a portfolio or if this was um, a uni project. Of course, it would be an issue if uh, I was doing this for my job. Uh, also, I want to be very clear here that I am not doing slow fashion because even if I'm not working in a frenzy to finish this one, at this space, there would be absolutely no way I would be able to make a living um, from making pleated skirts. And uh, because I'm like just freestyling it and just going with the flow at whatever pace I want, it would be even hard to calculate the development costs. And um, yeah, speaking of developments, let me get to it. So ready. So first I had this artwork in front of me for reference. And um, if you're that nerd, you know that there are many variations on the Sailor Moon uniform, but I am not doing a PhD on the topic. So I just chose the one I like the best already to um, start with. And it's this one because I like how, how wide the pleats look and how they look like kind of stiff. So instead of just like flowing or like they open and form this more like triangle or like trapeze shape, uh, like Hakama pants, which is another reference that I really enjoy. Then I proceeded to make pleats on a large piece of pattern paper. And uh, this was important to, especially to decide how the pleats in the center would work because I always wanted the pleats to point outwards instead of all going in the same direction. Um, actually, this is where I could have set my ass down to make a proper pattern, but instead I chose to use this proto pattern to make a test with this um, this wool voile because look uh, like this fabric was clearly not gonna give me this st stiff pleats like the drawing but what if it actually worked um, not to form like really stiff pleats but what if I actually liked the final result maybe I would like them to be like airy and flowy um, once I saw it. And uh, the other thing is pleats are kind of a pain in the ass to make. I'm always like, I love making clothes and at the same time I, I'm always talking about how much of a pain in the ass it is. Whew, great mentoring. Um, anyway, pleats are tricky to make. Hello Jack. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to review some techniques that I learned at Bunker Fashion College um, for working with delicate or luxury fabrics. So I hand stitched the pattern paper to the fabric so it would help me fold the pleats without the fabric moving around. Now, is this how professional pleaters do it? I can't say they <laughs> they do. I know that for like those small pleats, like accordion pleats, they use some wooden blocks to press fabric. And I'm gonna try to find a Dior haute couture video that shows this process. But you know, even if I press these pleats to perfection, it doesn't look like they wanna stay. I tried top stitching them, but it looks horrible. 
So this fabric was a no for this design. But you know, now I already started, I still like this fabric and this color. Uh, I'm not gonna buy new fabric just for it. Oh, hello blue. Cats and fabric, fatal, fatal attraction. attraction. Where was I? Um, but yeah, but I had this orange card and I just felt that if I could do both together, they would have the the sort of weight that I wanted. Yeah, so I got to this point where I should have definitely made a proper pattern. But instead I made the decision to cut strip, like large strips of fabric and stitching the orange cards and the blue voile together where I was supposed to fold the pleats and uh, then keep making the skirt very step by step so I could correct course as needed. And as a result, once I got all the pleats I wanted and tried the skirt on, it was one, too long and two, like too wide, too loose. And I think like, you know, if I had kept it like this, of course it would have worked. And if you go to a brand like um, Miu Miu, for example, they'll always have a more like conservative pleat and number like this one. But I was feeling brave and I chopped off 10 centimeters on the bottom and did this wide V on the front. And to make it tighter, I really didn't want to calculate like how much more I would have to fold on each pleat because that would involve a lot of math on an unexisting pattern and uh, I would have to fold everything all over again which would be a pain and I also didn't mention this before so uh, I wanted the skirts to be reversible so um... okay oh, I also have to go on editing I, I wanted the skirt to be reversible so I could still have the classic Sailor Moon blue and um, if I were to pleat everything again, maybe I would end up losing this reversibleness. So I just gathered the like the waistband a little bit, which was really hard to do since there were many many layers of fabric folded together, and the threads kept breaking when I pulled over the the thicker areas. And to finish it. Again, I didn't want to overthink it and I just did the simplest thing I could think of which is sewing and folding a tape over the, the seam allowance on the waists like a, like a kilt finish. Uh, at this point, like I also didn't want to buy more material so I use um, some for this tape, I use some of the fabric that I had chopped off uh, Previously, I used this fancy Riri zipper that I have been saving for years on the left side and some clear snaps that I found lost in the middle of my many, many, many sewing notions. And I, I won't zoom in too much to show this part because I, I actually didn't do the best job. It's a wearable piece, so I finished it just so I could have these uh, these pictures. But um, I still have a few observations at this point. So um, you can see it here, like it was really important that this V on the front is sewn properly. Uh, but I probably should, I definitely uh, should not have this little gather here and uh, and also I gathered the waistband two centimeters too much and cut off the length like three centimeters too short on the back. Three centimeters? I mean I don't know. The length on the back is just covering my butt cheeks. So, so yeah whenever I bitch about a sketch or a collage not necessarily being a design this is what I mean. Or um, if you look at cosplay also, you notice is 
it's hard to translate a cartoon heroine's outfits into something that is functional and looks the same in real life. If um, if you're working in an, uh, in an haute couture atelier and there's a whole team that's really skilled at turning sketches into clothes and then another team dedicated to casting the right model for each outfit and making them up to look like absolute perfection for the whole duration of just one runway show then of course my rent doesn't apply but if you're here to pick up some tips on design development to improve your work your creative process or your portfolio i definitely recommend you try cutting and sewing some of your fashion sketches or some of your rough ideas because i think making actual wearable garments and uh, seeing how it works on a human body is um, probably the most important parts of a designer's job. I mean, in a brand where they're actually trying to create something new instead of just like copy pasting what's already out there and uh, also trendy. Uh, so yeah, that does involve some risk taking and you know it's frustrating to see things going wrong it's frustrating to um, waste fabric so i do wish you the best of luck and also the wisdom to know when you should um, stop and do some more research or stop and uh, ask for for help or for some feedback and if you want to ask for my feedback and my help. This is when I plug my mentorship sessions, but first check out my website, check out my blog, my previous videos to see if I'm a good fit for you. And um, feel, free to, uh, feel free to leave some questions in the comment section or book a coffee date session to test drive me as a mentor. See you in the next video. Bye.